Welcome back to the channel everybody, my name is Ry Frost, thank you for stopping by. Today is part 3 of the series where we look at which healer should you play in Dragonflight. We've covered Restoration Druids, Preservation Evokers and now we're going to look at Restoration Shaman. If you want to see those other two videos and see the playlist for when we do eventually bring out all the different healers, the link to that is in the cards right there and in the description down below. So I was due to make the Shaman video last week, and it was going to be one of the first videos to come out, but since then, Shamans have received a little bit of a buff to their damage. So I wanted to wait until this weekend so we can test it out on Mythic Plus and see exactly how good Restoration Shamans have become. Bear in mind, they have only buffed their damage, they haven't touched their healing. And don't forget, if you do like this video and you want to see more, please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, write a comment down below. Will you be playing a Restoration Shaman? Wait until the end of this video, and will you be playing Restoration Shaman still? So these types of videos, we normally look at strengths and weaknesses, uh, but I feel like the situation that shamans are in right now, there aren't a lot of strengths. So today is just going to be a discussion about um, Mythic Plus and raiding situations, and we're going to cover sort of strengths and weaknesses in all in one, um, because I don't feel that there's going to be a very long video to talk about the strengths and weaknesses, because I believe there's a lot more weaknesses than there are strengths. So let's jump into that video. So if you can cast your mind back to the very early days of Dragonfly Alpha, when the talent system first came out, people were very excited about shamans, restoration shamans, elemental, and enhancement, because they their talent system seemed really good. It was completely revamped and the shaman base talents are very reminiscent of the olden days where we look at classic totems and bouncing your totems around. You had things like poison totem dispel and things like that. Um, so people thought that the shamans were going to be very strong. When people started to play it, um, they very quickly learned that Resto Shamans weren't in a really good place. Now, they've had some changes and tweaks since then, but where they are right now and where they would sit on a tier list and our discussion today... Um, we'll talk about um, the more weaknesses that they have and their strengths as well. Um, but very early on, uh, spoiler for if you're going to watch the rest of this video, um, I wasn't very pleased with the Shaman performance. Shamans have received this damage buff and they are quite strong. Their damage is very good and you would compare it to say a Resto Druid now and a Preservation Evoker. It is up there with the top sort of three or four. But that is sort of where it, it shines. In regards to healing, it still does suffer with the same issue. Um, a lot of people I've been looking at tier lists have been putting shamans in the sort of C tier, B tier, and I would sort of agree with it. They don't have a lot of healing output, and although the totem system works really well, in theory, when you actually play it, you realise you have to take certain talents out that are really important, like Ancestral Guidance, to put in like Poison Cleanse Totem and things like that. On that note, they are quite strong in certain situations. Um, poison Dispel Totem down, um, which you can see in this video I didn't um, because I wanted to test the actual healing output more than their utility. But when it comes to a video like this, we need to talk about both utility and healing. Um, so yes, the healing isn't that great. Um, they do suffer. They don't seem to have the sort of really meaty sort of spells that we have in say restoration druids and preservation of workers um, where that if there's a lot of high damage they don't really have a lot of things to cover it we still have our old favorites we have healing tide totem and cloud burst totem um, but what i've noticed in even plus tens i was really struggling to keep up with the healing yes i'm probably out playing it right and i know the professional shaman players might disagree with me but it seems to be very similar to what people are saying on both this channel and other channels that shamans aren't really that good now if we were going to put it into resto shaman damage compared to other healers it will be up there in sort of a tier maybe even s tier but when it comes to the actual healing and it seems to be very much at the very early days of dragonflight and especially in season four of shadowlands is that we're looking very much at more healing towards less damage so although shamans do shine in the damage department um, they do sort of lack in the healing department and this is where we're going to struggle in higher keys for mythic plus yes maybe up to 15s you'll be completely fine doing it once you've learned your rotation and people have learned the dungeons themselves and um, but when it comes to even higher keys like pushing 20s 25s uh, maybe even 30s shamans will really struggle but what we can also say is when we get more used to the dungeons and people take less damage from aoe and things like that shamans might raise up a little bit on that chart just because you don't tend to do a lot of healing when people really know what they're doing and you're really pushing and they do focus more on damage and this is where shamans could shine in higher keys with their utility because we have a lot of totems like i was saying it is reminiscent to the old classic days where we have totems for pretty much everything so we're going to look at the list and we're going to talk about the actual totems and the utility that a shaman brings so we still have our old favorites we've got tremor totem uh, we have earthen wall totem we have uh, capacitor totem you know everything's the same mana spring you know we have the old favorites but what we do have now is we have a poison cleansing totem 
So something that we do struggle with, if you didn't pick that, is that we can't cleanse poisons. The spell poisons every 1.5 seconds for 6 seconds. That is really good in regards to utility. We also have Tranquil Air Totem, which is really good for PvP, but there are some uh, PvE applications to it. It prevents pushback, um, and it also reduces any silence effect by 50%. So really good in PvP, but there are certain mobs and certain bosses that do silence AoE. So having that totem down will actually really help that situation. Um, and next to that is Stone Skin Totem which just reduces physical damage by 10% uh, so you can have one of the two um, but we have quite a lot of utility and I feel that maybe um, although they don't really benefit a lot from the healing abilities they do really well in utility and they have sort of something for everything it really does focus on totem gameplay um, and this is where I think it might be redeemed it is still yet to be discussed and, and seen what you'll probably find in very early days is that the shamans um, are not very good healers and until people learn the dungeons and learn the situations and you know learn their strengths um, they're not going to be anywhere near the chosen pick and they're not going to be flavor of the month and you'll probably find that when people are pushing like the big uh, race to world first raiders and, and mythic plus you know mdic scene and things like that you probably won't find a shaman in there um in favor of sort of like a resto druid or a preservation of Walker and things like that when it comes to the raiding scene i don't think they'll struggle as much because they focus more on aoe they still have healing rain they still have chain heal and you can talent into that to make them stronger and they have their talents as well in certain situations in raids they might benefit from this sort of pushback um silence and, and their increased damage reduction totems so they they will do okay in raiding situations they'll probably be like a b tier um, you'll probably want to just take one then again preservation evokers now have a um, bloodlust you might see shamans fall off and you might maybe maybe see one but you won't see more than one um, in raiding situations but the utility is probably better suited towards their um, the raiding situations than the Iron Mythic Plus. Um, but yeah, I will probably say you won't see many more than just maybe one, um, maybe even none. Some people might choose not to take them because they aren't very strong. You know, they, they're in a really situational place right now where if you increase their healing, it's going to be quite good. Um, but like I said, I feel like they're very much utility based around their totems and what they can prevent. So they have a totem for everything and that is where their strengths are in both Mythic Plus and in Raids. But I feel like there's a lot more strength to be had in the Raiding situation than there are in the Mythic Plus. You'll probably find very early on, especially in the pushing um in the MDI and things like that, you're not going to bring a shaman. The rest of shamans will not be there. And it'll be very much like the bigger healers, like Preservation of Ochres, Holy Priest, uh, Disc Priest, um, or a Resto Druid. You will not probably see a Resto Shaman. And I, th I seem to be throwing a lot of shade at shamans, and I, I do believe that we're in a really bad place at the moment. Um, their healing is okay. They can hit quite decent high heals. Uh, but as I was testing in the beta over the weekend, um, whereas with Resto Druids and preservation of workers i can very effortlessly sort of get 50k hbs i was struggling to even reach 40 on a resto shaman and that's literally pressing every button and another consideration that you need to think about is that all of that utility comes from the shaman baseline tree so whereas you can bring a resto shaman for that utility if it's needed you could also bring an elemental and an enhancement so what you might find is that um, people might be picking stronger healers right now um to obviously cover all that healing and pick a just an elemental or an enhancement to just do all that utility if needed because it is very situational but you might find resto shamans getting benched in favor for a stronger healer and then just asking their elemental shaman or enhancement shaman to just say can you just spec into the poison cleansing totem um just for this dungeon or just for this raid or even for this boss um they, yes they might lose a little bit of damage but the healing benefit they'll get by picking a stronger healer right now will be so much more beneficial for them. So to summarize in this video, yes, we've not sort of covered the general sort of strengths and weaknesses in both Mythic Plus and Raiding uh, because I felt like just one long discussion was really important to talk about because Resto Shamans are in a really good place right now. In Shadowlands, they were sort of C to B tier. Uh, they did rise up to A tier in sort of the end of Season 3 and then in Season 4 of Mythic Plus um, and in Raiding for Shadowlands. Uh, but in Dragonflight, they're sort of back down to their sort of b to c tier maybe even d tier in some cases um improving their healing might help but i think what they'll need is improving their sort of burst healing that they really need because like i was saying i was really struggling with getting really high numbers for healing um, and there are certain dungeons and, and certain raid bosses that will definitely need that high healing they have amazing utility but that utility is also given to elemental enhancement so people might find that they might not get picked in favor of a le or a um, enhancement shower because they also bring that utility so improving their healing will be a really good start for them um, it will bump them up to maybe 
B tier. Um, but right now, with Resto Druids and Preservation of Orcas being incredibly strong, um, they sort of do have a lot to catch up on. But yeah, let me know in the comment section down below what you think. It's been quite of a controversial video in the sense that um, I try and keep myself completely unbiased and just talk about strengths and weaknesses. But I felt like it was really important to talk about the actual problem with Resto Shamans right now. So hopefully this has helped. Um, this is beta, so it might change in the next couple of weeks. They might improve Resto Shamans. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Write in the comment section down below. Will you be maining a Resto Shaman? Um, if you are, and I apologize if you've changed your mind after watching this video, who knows? But anyway, my name is Ryfrost. I'll see you for the next video. This is part of the playlist where we talk about should you main this healer. The link to that is in the cards and in the description down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thumbs up. Write a comment down below. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.